This is a film about the right of a people to freedom and the power of the human spirit to resist against overwhelming odds. It's the story of Burma, once known as the Golden Land. On the surface, everything appears serene. It's a country of extraordinary beauty and gracious people. But Burma is also a secret country, isolated for the past 34 years since a brutal dictatorship seized power. The assault on its people all but forgotten. To tell their story, we had to go undercover. What we found was a land of fear. carrying their posters and flags. They were sh shot uh, and then they all died immediately on the spot. Nine students were badly tortured and they were sent to prison for seven years just for singing a freedom song. Those who have already been in prison, they know what it is like to be in a Burmese prison, and they know that any day they're liable to be put back there, and yet they do not give up. The generals who crushed democracy in Burma have ruled with a regime so harsh, bloody and uncompromising that the parallels with Indonesia and East Timor are striking. More than a million people have been forced from their homes, and according to the United Nations, untold thousands have been massacred, tortured, and subjected to a modern form of slavery. Burma, says Amnesty International, is a prison without bars. In 1988, the year before the democracy movement in China was crushed so publicly in Tiananmen Square, as many as 10,000 people were killed here by their government in a matter of days. The outside world knew little about this, the difference was the absence of television cameras. This film is being made in secret as the regime attempts to cover its crimes with the help of foreign investors and by declaring 1996 the year of the tourist. The history of modern Burma reaches back through the Second World War and a hundred years of British imperial rule. With a population of 45 million, it has a natural wealth perhaps unequaled in Asia. Oil and gas and vast teak forests. Renamed Myanmar by its military rulers, Burma has been turned into one of the world's poorest countries. And as we discovered, and we'll reveal later in this film, it's also a country where slave labor and child labor are common. To the British who colonised Burma in the early 19th century, the Golden Land was always a sideshow to its rule over India. However, under a guise of benevolence familiar to Indian nationalists, the same myths applied. The British were bringing civilization, not empire building. Rudyard Kipling wrote a famous popular song that romanticised Mandalay, a town he never saw, and which was then being stripped bare of its teak forests leaving vast dust bowls. Fortunes were earned by the British exporters of Burma's rice and precious stones. In the 1930s, companies were making profits of 12 million pounds, a huge amount in today's terms. The oil fields became a byword for expatriate wealth, and these interests were protected by an imperial army. Present military mentality is conditioned by the colonial period. It's like a colonial army. 
occupying the country. They behave like a corporate body, serving its own interests. So they don't recognize the people's representative or the will of the people because they themselves, they, they regard it as separated from and superior to the populace. That tradition derived from the colonial period. The movement for independence from Britain began in the 1930s among the students and monks. The national hero was a young army officer, Ong San, the father of Nobel Peace Prize winner, Su Chi. During the Second World War, Ong San and his comrades exploited the Japanese occupation to win independence. But in 1948, as independence was about to be granted, Ong San was assassinated. His name is revered in Burma today. What was unique about the movement he began and which led to democratic governments in the post-war years was its quality of Buddhism, socialism and democracy. The ideas of Marx, Nehru and Voltaire were adapted. Marx was virtually transformed into a disciple of Buddha. This flowering of democratic socialism coincided with a period of turmoil as Burma's ethnic peoples demanded autonomy. But in 1962, the army stepped in and seized power. Its leader was a Stalin-like figure called Ne Win. He ruled the country like Stalin ruled Russia through KGB. So he set up his intelligence apparatus, you know, which he used as his eyes and ears. So he see through the country. He see the country through this apparatus. So this apparatus become a government within the government. I think he's a control maniac. He's one of the most extraordinary, contradictory characters that one could ever come across, one who changed a good deal. I think in his earlier years, he was a playboy. In the 60s, he suddenly changed as a result of, of perhaps of his advisors. He changed his whole policy and became a, 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 a very rigorous, authoritarian, um, uh, puritanical, for other people anyway, kind of guy, and decided that Burma should be taken away from all kinds of foreign influence. Yeah, that, that hypocrisy in Ne Win is fascinating, isn't it? Because he was the gambler, the man who liked racing and turn up at Ascot yeah. now and then. And then he banned it all for the Burmese. Yes, I think he may have got cheated by a bookie at Ascot. <laughs> ne Win imposed a silence on Burma. He abolished its lively free press, and a strict censorship control newspapers, radio, books and films, isolating one of the most literate societies in Asia. The new rule stated, any incorrect ideas and opinions which do not accord with the times are banned. These torn and tattered books in a Rangoon market are the remains of free expression in Burma. Even our filming of them attracted the attention of military intelligence. Of course, rumour has been impossible to ban, especially when the subject is the dictator himself. When his soothsayer warned him there might be a bloodbath, he would stand in front of a mirror and he would trample on dead meat or something to simulate the blood, and then he would shoot himself in the mirror. And having done that, this would avert the possibility of assassination. Of all the world's megalomaniacs, perhaps only Ne Win is ruled by astrology and superstition. The best example of this was the day he bankrupted the population. Without warning, he cancelled most of Burma's currency, replacing it with banknotes that added up to or included the figure nine. According to his chief astrologer, nine was his lucky number. The Burmese weren't quite so lucky. As most people here keep their savings in cash, most of them were ruined. Burma was now completely impoverished. People went hungry while their fertile land was given the ignominious status of least developed country. Desperate for foreign exchange, the regime forced bankrupt farmers into the fields at gunpoint, while Ne Win bought properties in London and Tokyo 
and made a fortune in precious stones. The touch paper had been lit. The frustration that had been building for 25 years now exploded as the students took to the streets. It's just after dawn beside Inya Lake in the center of Rangoon. We're filming this with great care because even at this hour, it's almost certain we're being watched, which is a normal state of affairs for many Burmese. This causeway is known as the White Bridge. On March the 16th, 1988, hundreds of school children and students marched along it, singing the national anthem. Then as they looked behind them, they saw the steel helmets of the army and they knew they were trapped. According to eyewitnesses, the soldiers beat many of them to death, singling out the girls. Those who escaped were pursued here into the lake where they were caught and drowned one by one. Of the survivors, 42 were locked in a waiting van and left in the noonday heat where all of them suffocated to death. In the meantime, fire engines were brought here to wash away the blood. The government was arresting the uh, students, uh, hundreds of students, uh, all, including the female students. So on the way to prison, we were shouting that we, we were students, we are not criminals. They began to torture and beat the students. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they took about around 1 or 2 a.m. They came and take one by one. And they, they never come back. <laughs> ดิขานเนี่ยมาตะญาลงทาบีดาเนี่ยนอกตะเนจาหรอนอกเปลี่ยนเลิกกูซิบีจนเราดิ <laughs> ที่เจ้าหัวบ่พออออกมาตัวเปียวน่ะมีท้องทาบีดออะไรก่อนน่ะมีชื่อตรุตรุเปียวน่ะอ่ะดิดิเนบูเรมาดิดูทาบีดอ